It's been almost three months since the Moto 360 was announced at this year's Google I.O. event, and we were beginning to wonder if it would make its end of summer release window. Well, it just barely made it. We got our hands on the Moto 360 to see what makes the smartwatch design so smart. Let's tear it down. Hi, I'm Gwendolyn with iFixit, and today we're tearing down the brand new Moto 360. The Moto 360 is the latest entry into the Android Wear category, and the one we've been most excited to see since its announcement. A traditionally stylish departure from the LG G Watch and the Samsung Gear Live Square Face, the Moto 360 resembles a wristwatch with its round face and leather band. The watch case has a 46 millimeter diameter and is 11.5 millimeters high and weighs in at 49 grams for the leather band models. The display is a 1.56 inch backlit LCD with a resolution of 320 by 290 with a pixel density of 205 pixels per inch. Getting into the previous entries of Android Wear started with the wristband and the 360 is no exception. The wristband is held in place by a small rod that Motorola says requires special tools to remove, but we had no trouble getting our leather band off using our tweezers. Now we are left with our large watch face and we get to work on opening it. That means heat and lots of it. This seal is great for keeping out dust and water, but not so great for quick and easy repairs. Even with the back cover off, we still don't have a clear view of the inside, so we keep digging. With the help of our Jimmy Prying tool, we're able to separate the guts of the watch from the LCD. This bright green gasket you see is what helps the Moto 360 achieve its IP67 water resistance status, which means it's protected against water immersion for up to 30 minutes at a depth of one meter. With the flick of our spudger, we disconnect a couple of ribbon cables and separate the LCD from the battery and motherboard. With the use of this handy pull tab, we take the battery off the motherboard. This is a 3.8 volt, 300 milliamp hour battery. This is less than the LG G, which had a 400 milliamp hour battery, but it's the same as the Samsung Gear Live, which also had a 300 milliamp hour battery. With the battery off the motherboard, we check out the chips. This motherboard is home to the four gigabytes NAND flash made by Toshiba, and hidden underneath this large Micron IC, we find the Texas Instrument OMAP 3 processor. Next up, we check out the cool inductive charging coils under a backing sticker. The Moto 360 is the first Android Wear smartwatch to ditch physical charging ports in favor of inductive charging. Lastly, we try to get our little round LCD free, and to do that, we need more heat and more prying to coax it from its cozy ring. Interestingly, the display is not a perfect 360 degrees due to its ambient light sensor. So shave a few degrees off that 360 in exchange for auto-adjusting brightness. We've come to the end of our teardown, which means it's time to talk repairability. At iFixit, it's our mission to teach people how to repair everything. So we give every gadget we tear down a repairability score between one and 10. 10 being the easiest to repair and one being the most difficult. The Moto 360 scored a three out of 10, and here's why. On the upside, the watch band is easily replaceable with small enough tweezers. But on the downside, heat and careful prying is required to remove the rear panel and even more prying to pull out the inner housing. The battery is trapped deep within the device within the inner housing. Nearly complete disassembly is required to replace it. And finally, the display requires complete disassembly to replace as it is removed from the back of the main bezel. For the complete teardown, including tons of beautiful high quality images, head on over to ifixit.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all our latest teardowns and repair videos. You can follow us on Twitter at ifixit and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash